So we've confirmed tonight that the U.S. is flying missions over Syria now with both manned flights as well as with drones. And the White House earlier said it may decide to hit terror targets with or without Syria's permission because Syria is saying they would view that as an act of aggression. So what is the mission mission here? How how far should we go? And what if Syria decides to shoot back? uh, Lieutenant General Tom McInerney is a Fox News contributor with me now. General, what should the mission be? The mission should be, as Secretary Kerry said and uh, Secretary Hagel alluded to last week, is to destroy ISIS or ISIL or IS. Destroy them. Not push them back, Megan. Destroy them. Let's have a 30-day air campaign, 200 targets a day, 24-7, and I assure you there won't be much left of ISIS. But we seem to be very reluctant. I I disagree with Andy that it's our problem. It is part of the Middle East problem. And clearly they have the indigenous forces on the ground that can support that air campaign. But as people remember in Desert Storm, we had a 38-hour air camp, 38-day air campaign. And there was a 100-hour ground campaign. When we went in against Saddam Hussein and Operation Iraqi Freedom, we had a simultaneous air and ground campaign, and we still defeated a far more formidable force uh, than uh, ISIS is today in 23 days. So there's not much question that we could, that our military could do it, could take ISIS out if if they are given the order to do it. But the question I ask you is the same one I asked Andy. There are many in this country, you mentioned Desert Storm under President George Bush, the elder. There are many, especially on the left in this country, that believe if we hadn't done that, we wouldn't have faced 9-11, that, that we have antagonized uh, these groups over the course of our own history to make them hate us. And if we go, this is their theory, and if we go in a place like Syria and start bombing there tonight, this week, uh, or in the near future, we, are, we will create more hate and we will make more targets out of ourselves and our children. Baloney. Look, Megan, radical Islamists are coming after us no matter what we do to them. That ideology is evil as Nazism, fascism, and communism. And most of the people talking about this do not have any idea what that ideology says. And we're infidels, and they intend to expand globally, to have a global caliphate. The fact is, is all this other stuff that we are inducing them to come after us has no meaning whatsoever once you understand the ideology we're fighting. I agree with Andy. The United States Army still hadn't figured it out because they're calling uh, Fort Hood, Major Nadal Hassan, a workplace violence. Mm -hmm. That was radical Islam. And until we as a nation understand that this is who we are fighting, and we're caught in the middle between a fight between moderate Islam and radical Islam. Let's let them defeat it. We will help them, but let's not do the the primary driving. No matter what we do, they're going to come after us, and if we let ISIS expand and own the Arabian Peninsula, then they're going to be a far more formidable threat, and they will be here. And they'll be here maybe this 9-11. I don't know, but we better be much better prepared than we were for Benghazi because of the political narrative. There was an election. So uh, Osama bin Laden was dead. GM was alive. That's the wrong narrative. Got it. Lieutenant General Tom McInerney, good to see you tonight.